guys, Candice here. Welcome back to our Sermon Saturdays. Today is going to be week three in our Dig Deep series. But before we get started, let's, let's take a little recap and see where we have been. In week one, Jordan talked about how it's important for us to have God as the foundation of our lives. In week two, we went over why perseverance through hard moments is so important. And like I said, today is week three. I'm here to talk to you, and I'm really excited. Before we get started, I'd like to open us in prayer. Dear God, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for this moment and this opportunity I have to share your word with everyone. I pray that you would just be with us, Lord, and speak through me. In your name we pray, amen. So today's topic, guys, is called In the Unseen. And when I was told that this is going to be my topic, I was really excited. Nervous, I'm still nervous, but really excited. Because In the Unseen, I feel like has been the theme of my life for the past couple years. The unseen is this place where people don't really see what's going on in your life. They don't really see the struggles that you're facing on the day to day. They don't see how hard those low moments are because no one's really around when that happens. For me, my unseen looked like my plans for college getting delayed. It looked like everything that I had been working for just stopping in their tracks. And I was so confused in that moment. I was so confused in that season because I felt like, God, what's happening? I, We've gone so far, we've, we've gotten this far, why isn't this happening? Is there something that I did wrong? Do I just need to try harder? I was just trying to figure out what's the next step? How do I get past this season? How do I just push past this and, and move on to what I felt like was I, where I was supposed to be, which is college? And in that season, I learned something. I learned that when you're in a season where people don't see you, where you're under pressure, there are two outcomes that can come out. And today's sermon is just going to be based all around that. It's going to be, we're going to talk about those two outcomes and how we can choose and how we can choose one outcome over the other. So in my message today, the passage in scripture that we're going to be focusing on is going to be coming from 1 Samuel. And we're going to be talking about a guy that a lot of you may already know. His name is David. So David was the king of Israel. Before he was a king of Israel, he was a shepherd boy. He was the youngest in his family. He was often overlooked. And for a lot of reasons, he, he shouldn't have been king, but God chose him. And if you, if you know anything about the story of David, you know that David does eventually become king. But the journey from shepherd boy to king was not an easy one. It wasn't a short one. And it wasn't one that was simple. It was actually a pretty complicated journey full of ups and downs. So let's start in the beginning. David is the youngest in his family, and his job in his family is to take care of, his, of the sheep and the goats. So he spends most of his days outside in the field. One day, the prophet Samuel gets a word from the Lord, and God says, Samuel, there is a new king that I want you to anoint. I want you to go to the house of Jesse, and I want you to go to his sons, and there you will find the next king. So Samuel obeys God, and Samuel goes to Jesse's house, and he sees the eldest, and the eldest is strong, and he thinks, this is the guy, but God says no. The second one comes along. Let's say he's the really smart one. Maybe you're that person. Maybe you know someone like that. They're very smart. They're very intelligent. They can accomplish things. They're just, they're the person that you go to. They're the one that you think of as a leader. But then God, st God still says no. And then this is what the Lord says to Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When Samuel came and wanted to look for the next king, Jesse, Jesse brought out his sons. He brought out the ones that he thought would be, would be the next king. He brought out one after the other and after the other. And then eventually he ran out of sons and Samuel still hadn't chosen one. So Samuel went to Jesse and asked him, hey, are these all your, are these all your sons? Do you have any others? And Jesse said, I still have, there is still one more. He is the youngest, but he's out in the fields with the sheep and the goats. When Samuel came to the house, no one went out to find David. No one told him, hey, there's a guest. We're going to have a party. No one invited him. He was invisible. He was overlooked. He was unseen by his own family and by his own father. But David wasn't unseen by God. And this brings me to my first point. What is unseen to people is not unseen to God. A lot of the times we think that if people don't see what we're going through, if people don't see how hard it is, if they don't see us, then we're not there. But even in those moments when we feel like we're invisible, God still sees us. 
He still sees what you're going through. He still knows how you feel. He's still aware of you, even if you don't think he is. So let's continue on with the story of David. After David gets anointed to be king, you would think, like, if I was David and God anointed me to be king, I would think, okay, so I'm going to be a king. So let me start getting, making my way to the palace. Let me start trying to figure out how I'm going to become this king that you tell me I'm going to be. But that's not what David does. In the Bible, you'll see that David actually goes back to the pasture. He goes back to the fields with the sheep and the goats. He goes back to where he was before. He doesn't try to force his way into the palace. Instead, he stays in the field. He takes care of the sheep and the goats. He takes care of his responsibilities. And David does it well. When he's in the field, he doesn't do it grudgingly. He is herding these sheep. He is taking them from where they need to, from where they, from, to where they need to go. He's taking them where they need to get water. He's protecting them and watching over them day in and day out. In the nighttime, he's there. In the daytime, he's there. When a lion comes to steal a sheep and to kill one, David fights it off. And this is not a time where there were guns and you could stand at a safe distance and shoot. This is all David had was a club, which is basically a big stick. So David went head to head with a lion and fought it off with a stick. He did the same with a bear. So David had courage. He didn't run away from his, his responsibilities, even though they seemed smaller than where he was called to. David was obedient and humble enough to know that he needed to still take care of his responsibilities in the season he was in. And then eventually God would take him to where he was called to be. That is my second point. Focus on your field and the palace will come. A lot of the times for us, when we're in a season where we know we're headed for greater things and we know we're headed for higher things, but our situation doesn't change, we get frustrated. We try to force a way and find a way to move from where we are to where we want to be, from where we are right now to the place where we feel like God is calling us to be, that higher place. It's always a better place. It's never a lower place. We always aim for a higher place. But the, the trouble with that is when you try to rush ahead in front of God, when you try to find a way on your own strength, you get burnt out and you get tired. And I know that because that's how I felt when I was in my season. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what are the ways I can get into college? What are the different schools? Maybe there's a scholarship. Maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way that I can um, earn the way to go. Nothing is wrong with any of these things. It's not wrong to, to want to work to make your dream come true. But it's wrong to want to make your dream come true on your own strength. It's wrong to force it when it's not the time yet. And when I tried to do that, I got tired and I got frustrated. And sometimes I got bitter. And, and that is the place that I want to warn you. And I want to help you see that you don't have to go there if you are where, if that is where, you're, if that is where you are right now. With David, he didn't choose to force his way to the palace. He chose instead to trust that God would take him there when it was time. So instead, he focused on his responsibilities, and he did his best where he was. In 1 Samuel 16, 18, Saul, who was king of Israel at that time, he was talking to his servants, and he was trying to find someone to come and play music in the palace. And the servants told him, hey, there's actually this guy. His name is David. He's a shepherd, but he actually is a good musician. He's also a brave warrior. He is a man of war and has good judgment. He is also a fine-looking young man, but this is the most important part and the Lord is with him. David's reputation, because he worked hard in where he was at and didn't force his way into the palace, was that the people in the palace knew what kind of man he was. The people in the palace knew that God was with him. And David eventually, he was called to the palace and he started working there. He started to play music there and he did it well again. After the palace, there came a time where Israel went to war with Philistine. Philistine was another nation. It was a nation that was basically enemies with Israel. Time and time again, they would get into battles. And this is one of those battles. But in this battle, when the Israelites lined up on one side and the Philistines on the other side, the Philistines sent out their champion. His name was Goliath. He was a literal giant. He was taller than any of the other men. And he was stronger than anyone there. He came out to the middle of the field and he started, he put out a challenge to the Israelites. He said, look, if you can send someone out here and they can kill me, then we will all be your slaves. But if I defeat your champion, then you become our slaves. The people of Israel were terrified. No soldier went out, no king went out. And so Goliath just taunted them day in and day out. He insulted God, he insulted them, and he just kept, he kept doing this. During this time, David's brothers were at the war. 
They were on the Israelite side. They're one of those soldiers that didn't want to go out and meet Goliath. David's dad sends David out there with food. So basically, David was go food. David went there with the food. He brought, him to his, he brought the food to his brothers, and he saw Goliath, and he saw what Goliath was saying. Through conversations with people, he asked why no one was going out to fight them. And they told him, are you crazy? He's a giant. We'd all die. Everyone's terrified. No one would fight him. But David said this. David said, I'll fight him. I'll fight him. And no one believed him. They're like, you're a shepherd boy. Who are you to go fight against a giant? You don't even know how to fight. But the thing was, somebody heard and told Saul. So David went to, to Saul, and he, he convinced Saul to let him go out there. At first, Saul was reluctant because he too didn't believe that David could do it. So his family had over, already overlooked him. His brothers doubted him. His king doubted him. But David still went out to fight the giant. When David went out to fight Goliath, Goliath insulted him again and mocked him and said, you sent a kid to fight me. I'm going to kill him. He's not going to make it. But after that, I want you to hear what David says to Goliath. In 1 Samuel 45, verse 47, it says, David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. That last part is the part that I want you to focus on. When David stepped out into that battlefield, he wasn't focused on what he could do. He wasn't focused on Goliath. He was focused on God. David knew where his strength came from. He knew where his victory lied. He knew that even though he was going to have to fight, the victory was ready in his hands. And that is my third point for you today. Before a victory, there is always a battle. If there was no battle, there would be no victory. When David stepped out onto that battlefield, he wasn't afraid because he knew who was on his side. He wasn't relying on his own strength because he knew God was with him. I wonder how many of us get tired of fighting the battles that we're facing because we're doing it on our own strength. Because we think, you know what? I'm in the season where nobody sees me. My parents will see how hard it is. My friends will see how hard it is. I can't do this on my own, but I'm still going to push it and try and make it. But we're, we're just burning out because we're relying on what we have to solve a problem that is bigger than us. What I want to remind you today is that like David, you're not in this battle alone. Whatever the battle is you're facing right now, if it's your school plans being delayed, if it's your family business that has gone a way that you didn't think it would ever go, whatever you're facing right now, you're not facing it alone. You may feel like you have to fight it on your own. You may feel like you have to find a solution. You may feel like nobody sees you, but it's not true. There are a few things that I want you to walk away with today. The first thing is what is unseen to people is not unseen to God. You are not invisible to God. I don't know what kind of voices in your head right now telling you that that's not true, telling you that you are alone, telling you that this is too far gone, that God has abandoned you. But I'm here to tell you that that voice is a lie. And I'm here to tell you that God still sees you and he is still working with you and for you. The second thing that I want you to remember when you walk away from this is to focus on your field and the palace will come. A lot of the times we get caught up in wanting to focus at, at the end result. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you neglect the circumstances that you are in, you may miss out on what God has for you right now. And that is something that you don't want to do. Because maybe right here, right now, in this moment of unseen, God is trying to work in you a heart that is able to love people who don't love you back. Maybe right now, God is trying to teach you what faith really is. Maybe right now, God is trying to strengthen you. You don't know what God has for you right now. If you walk away from the season and you don't respond to him here and, here and now. If you're willing to focus on your field, if you're willing to focus on your responsibilities right now and to work and to do that well, as well as you can, and surrender the rest to God, the palace will come. The third thing that I want you to walk away with is that before a victory, there was, before a victory, there is always a battle. If there is no battle, then there is no victory. This is really simple. We love the high moments of life. We love the accomplishments. We love the victories. But we have to understand and acknowledge the fact that those victories come at a price. 
They come after the struggle. They come after the fight. They come after pushing and straining and trying and digging deep and persevering through hard moments. Those victories come with effort. So if you're in a place right now where you feel like you're in a battle, please don't give up where you are because the victory is coming. You just need, you just need to keep believing that it will. Know that the victory is in your hand and it is coming, but you can't skip the battle. But also when you're in that battle, remember that it's not just you fighting. Remember that God is with you and that He is the one enabling you. He is the one fighting on your behalf and it's because of Him that the victory will come. I wonder if there's anyone watching this right now and you're thinking, okay, that's great, but it's hard right now. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm facing. You're right, I don't. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you've suffered. I don't know what your fight is right now. But I do know from my own experience that God is still with you. I do know that God still loves you despite what you may feel. He is still working for your best interest at heart. There's a verse that I want to leave you with today, and it comes from 1 Samuel 25, 29. This is later down the road when David has already killed Goliath, but David is still not yet king. In fact, this is a season where David is still being chased by Saul. Saul is so jealous and paranoid that he's trying to kill David, and David is running away from Saul. He's being pursued by the people that he served. He's being pursued and hunted down, and this is the verse that I want you to walk away with. 1 Samuel 25, 29. Even when you are chased by those who seek to kill you, your life is safe in the care of the Lord your God. As we close, I would like to pray for you. I would like to pray for all of us. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you, God, for today. Thank you for this word that you have shared with me and you have allowed me to share it with everyone here watching. Father, I just pray that for anyone here who is in a moment where they feel like they are invisible, they feel like nobody sees them, they feel like it's just so hard because they're so alone. But Lord, I pray that your presence would be made, made known to them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just remind them and show them that you are still with them, God, and you are still for them. Thank you, Lord, again for this time and this opportunity that you have given me to share with everyone here. I pray that it may be a blessing to them, it may be an encouragement to them, and that you would work in and through their lives. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for tuning in today. Check the description box below for the discussion guide. Remember that Tribes is tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. We can't wait to see you. So make sure that you contact your tribe leaders for more info. See you there.